What's up, everybody? This is Podcast Game Overs, episode 149, Saturday, July 15, 2023. I am Wasabi Ice Cream, joined as always by Rick. Rick and the Kid. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Rick, and I got my kid here. That's not a nickname. I just literally (laughs) have a baby right now that won't stop squirming. Uh, He's been pretty quiet today. Say hi, Bubba. Say hi, Junior. Nope. Oh, that's that's what nope. keep yeah. you can't be touching that. <laughs> yeah, he is like squirm. I wish you could see him just like he is just like not holding still. He wants to grab everything, and when I pull it away from him, he like looks at me like you dickhead. Um, <laughs> but no, we played some games. Uh, I picked the Diablo Four. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. I'm pretty excited to talk about it. Uh, but I'm just gonna say before we start, it's good, guys. It's so good, guys. It's, it's good. really good. Oh my god, it's you guys, good. it's good. It's good. Um. <laughs> As a Diablo addict, I have fucking relapsed hard with this game. Yeah. Um, so much so that in between, I got a kid, so I can't just sit there and play Diablo 4 at my computer all day. So to make up for it, I've been playing Diablo Immortal in between Diablo 4. Oh, just God. so I can get like some sort of bump. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking bad. I got a fucking, <laughs> I am down bad for this game. It's not even funny. I am not joking when I say like I'm addicted to this, like... It's I'm addicted to it. I'm fucking addicted to it. And I hate myself. I hate myself. Um, every moment I'm not doing something, I'm thinking about playing Diablo 4. It's fucking bad. But it's a good game, though. It's a really, really fucking good game. Um, let's start where we always start, man. Tell people what you've been playing. <laughs> it's uh, not Diablo. <laughs> well, Exo Primal came out yesterday. Yes, I saw on the stream you were playing that. But I was yeah. too busy with the baby. So how is it? Now the full game's out. Like, oh, it's garbage, games. dude. It's trash. Yeah. So, you know, it's on Game Pass. So that's the only reason why I even bothered. I, well, you know, I already knew it was trash, but you now in the in the full version, you get to see a little bit of the story, and yeah. the story that's there kind of it seems interesting. I don't totally understand everything that's happening in it, but. Uh, what I will say is that, you know, it does a thing like dinosaurs have somehow it, it taken over the planet and, yeah. you know, the premise that I thought it was, was that you were like a dinosaur exterminator and you, you get a squad together and you exterminate dinosaurs. It's not at all. No, not at it's all way the weirder and more complicated than that. It's like they set up like these. Dinosaur, yeah, the dinosaurs are like a byproduct of like some sort of like manufacturing thing, and you they produce energy when you like kill them. It's so fucking weird, and it's like, dude, I don't think it had to be this weird. Like, yeah, I, but then the only reason you're killing them is because they set up this this <laughs> tournament of of fighters that they set up these games where it's a five v five thing. And you compete to see who can kill the most dinosaurs the fastest yeah. and in the most interesting ways. And it's a fucking, it's like a little tournament thing. It's a stupid excuse to make an Overwatch clone where you kill dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, and which like is a P- like a PvP game. Which is like so weird because like I saw Capcom's whole thing about it. And when I was watching, I was like, wait, that's what's going on? Yeah. It's this weird, like. I, I can't even explain it, but like like I said, like there, there's some new like system that they have, and these dinosaurs are like a byproduct of it. And when you kill them, it produces energy, and it's yeah. it's really weird. It's super weird, and not even like cool, high concept, just kind of weird and dumb and overexplained. But yeah, it's like oh my god, it's it's Kojima without any of the charm. <laughs> Where it says, here's some weird, dumb shit and some weird, dumb explanations for it. But yeah. not as charming as what Kojima can do. But um, the, the story that's there seems, it seems interesting. It's trying. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, the characters, the characters are kind of uh, interesting in that they, they, they're all, like, from different parts of the world. So they all have these different actors. There's, like, a Jamaican guy. There's, like, a, an Australian guy. There's a Russian lady. Uh, you know, they're all from different parts of the world and they, the way they interact with each other is uh, there's like a parallel universe so they, they start seeing their other self 
and they're like, oh, what is going on here type shit. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you get a cut scene and then you have to play, I don't know, six or seven rounds before you get the next bit of cut scene. And then I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I got one cut scene yeah. and I was like, I can't bring myself to play this fucking game to get. You to should play Cassette Beast because it does a lot of the same shit. It's a huge cast of characters, but they also have the benefit of them being from like different timelines and different time periods. Yeah. So someone will be like, I missed the internet. And the guy's like, what the fuck is an internet? Like it's it's really fun. <laughs> even even so after after the demo, because I played the demo, and the demo only had like that PvP stuff in it, and that's all the game was going to have until people until there was a fucking outrage of people that were like, dude, I don't want to engage any of this PvP bullshit. The PvP is the worst part of the game by the way yeah they tried to make this overwatch thing where you kill dinosaurs and at the very end it's like prepare for battle and then you actually go head to head against the other team uh and it's, and it's t terrible it's fucking garbage because it's not balanced at all for that you got you got characters that are like specifically made for killing dinosaurs and you got characters that are specifically made for pvp shit and the two shall never meet like they're not you're gonna pick a character that's a dinosaur character and you're gonna be stuck in pvp you can switch at any time but it's like fuck, like what's the point like this shouldn't even be a thing so they added yeah. a mode they added a mode where there's no pvp after after people's fucking outrage so that's what i would be playing yeah like, so let me just kill the dinosaurs why why can't what Killing dinosaurs seems like a slam dunk for a fucking great concept. It's a slam dunk. Making... All I wanted out of this game was Earth Defense Force with dinosaurs. With dinosaurs, exactly. Had, I was like, how do you fuck this up? But it's it's crazy because Capcom's been, they've been killing it lately for yeah, the past I mean, like, they, couple years. And then, and then you're this. seeing this, I'm like, what the fuck is this piece of shit? I just like, don't, it, I don't understand why they had to make this game the way they made it. There's a battle pass. There's, um, there's like all this bunch of shit you can just buy you can buy level skips because some of the some of the frames you can't even use some of the the characters until you've like leveled way up like some of the good characters you can't even use until like th there's a character in the match i'm showing right now on screen that this guy must have bought because you can't even unlock that character and you until you hit like level 30 or some shit uh you know, there was like a Hanzo character that uses a sword that I was using in the in the demo. That was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna use that guy when the game comes out. And you can't even use him until you get like level 40 or some shit, like end game type shit. That's insane. And so you can buy level skips. They just sell. You can just buy level skips. You can buy cosmetics. There's a battle pass. You can buy skips. All that shit. It's a it's a full price 60 hour game. And uh, yeah, it just got all this fucking dumb shit in it, man. It's uh, not good. Yeah, that's obnoxious as fuck. Yeah, that's obnoxious as hell. Like I, I was kind of interested in it. It's like fuck, it, it's on Game Pass, but now I'm like, oh, I'm too busy with Diablo. Like, I'll yeah. be fine. I'll play this like later. I got nothing else to do. Yeah. Um, and... it's a bummer because the game looks fun. Like it looks fun until you like do anything. <laughs> it yeah. looks like a good time until you start playing it. Yeah. Because, you know, Titanfall, Titanfall 1 did the same thing with its campaign, I guess, where yeah. you play PvP and then you do a certain number of matches and then you unlock some story, story shit. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it didn't work out for that game, but, you yeah. know, they were able to make a second one, thank God. But, that was better. Yeah. Yeah. That's not just better, but, like, critically acclaimed, I think, the second yeah. game. Just nobody played it because... You know, they got burned by the first one. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with this, man. Like maybe it'll turn into something cool with the second game, but we'll if that if Capcom even does anything. Um Yeah. It's a huge bummer because they're gonna they're gonna see the reception of this and be like, oh, people don't like dinosaurs. And we're not gonna see another dinosaur game ever again. Because dinosaurs <laughs> are fucking cool, but nobody wants to make dinosaur games anymore. Yeah, well after especially after they have to backpedal from like, no guys, it's not a dino crisis type shit. Uh which was like, bro, like just lean into it. Like, yeah, yeah. 
Or even just like, I don't know, it's not a title crisis, but, you know, if it was received well, it might make us reconsider, like, dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, no. No. So, yeah, um, it's on, it's on Game Pass, so maybe just, like, install it, play it for, like, an hour. That's what I did. Yeah. And I installed it. But you know what's really good? You'll be playing for more than an hour. Diablo 4. Yes. Let's talk about it. It's yes. fucking good. It's so fucking good. It's oh good. Oh my god, Diablo 4 fucking ticks every box for me, dude. It is just, I am like flying half mass every time I play that game. And it is it is just so fucking addicting. Um, I actually kind of care about the story a little bit. Like, not a lot, but more than I did in 3. Um, <laughs> the open world stuff works pretty well. Like, I was a little worried about how big the game was going to be, but it's it's pretty fun. Um, oh my god, the, the stop just dies so good in this game still. Like, look, look, you're playing Sorcerer right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm running uh, Necromancer, because Necromancer's a lot of fun. And I'm okay. having a fucking blast with Necromancer. Hello. Oh, fussy. Dude, come on, it's my turn to talk now. <laughs> I'm allowed, I think he's hungry. I'm gonna get him some food right now. Um, but yeah, Necromancer's a lot of fun. Um... I'd probably recommend Necromancer for anyone who's, like, new to these types of games, because, like, having, like, minions kind of makes the game easy. Yeah. Um, I tried getting creative and doing, like, a no minion build for it, because there are some, like, skills. Um, there are some skills in the tree that give you bonuses if you let go of your minions. So I was trying to do that, and that's the only time the game got difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's it definitely... that's. That, that's my one biggest problem with this game is that you definitely get punished for trying to be creative like yeah. there was a there was a there was a meta and everyone's following it and if you don't follow it you're gonna have a, a bad time i think like my problem too is that it was super early in the skill tree so the bonuses weren't that great but i'm noticing i'm at the end of the skill tree right now and the bonuses are a lot better for like no minion build so i might give it another shot and see if it's like more viable now yeah um especially with the aspects you could unlock that's another thing i like about this game um aspects is really cool um in the last game um legendary gear had like legendary abilities so those are like specific to that piece of armor it was stuff like oh um if you have like for every minion you have out, you get a 10% boost in damage or something. Um, or using Bone Storm causes corpses to explode. Like these really cool little things that can just like, that can change how your build works. Like that was the crux of the game. That's where your DPS came from, are these like legendary abilities or these legendary, um, these, le these legendary armors. And you can pull those legendary abilities off of them, put them into Kanai's cube, and attach it to your character. Now, the way it works is you unlock what are called aspects, which are the same thing. Um, and those aspects can be attached to your gear with a special vendor. And that just opens up the door so much for, like, customization and how you want to build your character, especially since, like... Every single aspect is different. The ability is different depending on the gear you attach it to. So there's one I found that was uh, when I use Blood Rush, it causes corpses around me to explode, and I get a 0.5% reduction to my cooldown for every corpse that gets blown up. If I attach that to a two-handed weapon, that bonus is uh, improved by 100%. <laughs> Little things like that. And so, like, there, there's some thought here now. It's like, okay, so last game, the meta was like, oh, you want to use either two weapons or a weapon and an offhand. So you can maximize, like, the aspects that go into it, right? Because uh, instead of having one aspect, you have two aspects. But now, because the aspects are stronger or weaker, depending on if you attach it to, like, a weapon, an amulet, a one-handed weapon, a two-handed weapon, yeah. now there's some thought, like, okay, now two-handed weapon builds are viable now because... The bonus you get with the aspect is like worth not having another aspect in your offhand yeah. um or it can be depending on your build like it's, it's so cool about it and i think that's where the game like really shines with the aspects have you like fucked around with any of those yet 
Yeah, the problem is you, you have to like clear the dungeons to get them. Not or... all of them. The good ones, there's some good ones that you have to clear the dungeons for, but there are some that you find just from random gear. Yeah. And... But I, I, I haven't found any great one. I found one good. I found one good one that like pops a barrier whenever your health gets low enough. Well, first of all, yeah. my my build was just completely. It was not. I found out that my build, the build that I was trying to do, was just completely unviable for end game. So, sorcerer, you know, I like to make like a lightning witch. Yeah. In every one of these games, I try to make like a lightning witch. Yeah, just, a lightning character that like does um, not aims. work. Yeah. Does not work in this game at all. A, you have to, you have to like diversify your elements to maximize your uh, effectiveness, really. Yeah. So. I dabbled a little bit in the ice shit, and I was like, oh, this ice still ain't getting it done. Just for, like, barrier-type stuff. Just for, you know, damage protection a little bit. Yeah. That wasn't working out, so recently I switched to fire. Just getting a little fire in there. So I finally found I finally found a build that works around lightning and fire, where yeah. all of my all of my attacks do, do fire. It, it burns mm. motherfuckers. So, and then I have a fire shield that explodes and everything around me gets set to fire. And then I do additional stun and lightning shit to enemies that are on fire. So okay. it like, it kind of works together like that. And yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. So like that, that, that was one of the things for me. I was like, I, I like my build is not good yet. My equipment isn't good yet. And my aspects aren't like nothing was set yet. I couldn't Exciting. figure anything yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. So now I, I finally think I know where I'm at and where I can go from from here. So I'm mm -hmm. starting to look at I'm more doing aspects. Pretty well. Yeah, that's the thing. If you look at those aspects, like that's where your damage and that's where your build really shines from. Yeah. Um, and that's when it started changing for me when I started getting aspects. Like I found one, um, I was changing a lot between like my uh, and they call it a basic skill in this game, but I, I always call them generators. That, that's your resource generators. That's what it's called in uh, Diablo three, I think. Um, but it's like your left click skill, you know, the one you're using a lot, the one that like doesn't cost any resource. It actually generates more resource for you. Um, the Necromancer has a couple and the two I was choosing were between Sever or I just swing a scythe. Uh, no, that's Sether. I can't. That's another skill. I can't remember what that's called. Um, and decompose, which like, it's like a damage over time, like long range effect that damages over time. After there's a bonfire force every four seconds of damaging an enemy, they'll drop a corpse with some lucky hit chances to like drop more corpses. And at first, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm between the two of them. I don't know which one to get. And then I found an aspect that improves my decompose. Because it's, it's the decompose gives me like two essence my my resource every second, which isn't a lot, but it's better than like nothing. It gives me a steady stream of like resource. But with this uh, this aspect I found, anytime my decompose generates a corpse, it gives me twenty essence. Now my max essence is a hundred. <laughs> Necromancer mm. has like notoriously low essence, so I'm like. All right, <laughs> this is cool. And I found there's another aspect that I'm trying to find right now that uh, every time I generate a corpse, decompose um, chains to two other enemies. And those enemies can produce corpses too. So that, that'll boost my essence bo resource even more. So, I'm, okay, now I can fire off like my blight, I can fire off my abilities, I can fire off. Instead of having stuff that's like on a cooldown, I, now I have stuff that's like on a resource instead to bump up my DPS. And Blight's great because it does a bunch of, on of a damage on, on contact, but it also drops a pool of acid underneath the enemy and does damage over time. And... Oh my... He's not actually coughing. He does this to get my attention. Um, <laughs> I swear to God, dude. Um... And while and I have another ability, so while enemies are blight is causing um, slowdown and has a chance to immobilize, 
and while enemies are slowed down or mobilized, I get another 10% boost to my minions, their, their damage output. And it stacks, so if they're immobilized and, and slowed and vulnerable is another one I can do. It's like, it's, it caps at 30%. I just free DPS. And I'm like, okay, I'm having fun now. Like, this is the stuff that, like, gets yeah. me excited for the game, dude. It's like, yeah. seeing this stuff, like, synergize, like, to, 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 to simplify, my decompose is building up more essence. Like, a fire off Blight more, which is causing more damage for my minions to be able to do, while giving me, like, direct damage on hit. It's fucking incredible. Like, this is what gets me excited. This is why, like, I love playing these games, is seeing this shit happen. Um, I'm gonna have you talk about your build while I get a baby a bottle for this baby. Uh, but I'll still hear you. I have my headset on. All right. Yeah. So my I switched things up. I was that lucky hit. The lucky hit stuff is just I I don't know if I love it or if I hate it because I feel I, I feel hated like, it at first, but I think there's some viability in it. I'll go into when I get back. Keep yeah. Talking. So I I I started really scrutinizing the the lucky hit stuff. Switch my build up so I could switch my build up so i don't have to rely on it as much as i was in my previous build which is all just i was just doing like just straight up if i wasn't critical criticaling or lucky hitting i just wasn't doing enough damage but now with the fire stuff i i set stuff on i think it's called like burning i set burning on every every one of my attacks causes burning now and then on top of that i do more damage to burning enemies and then burning is like a damage over time thing to begin with. And on top of that, all of my cooldown abilities, when I use a cooldown ability, everything around me uh, enters stun. Everything around me gets stunned when I use a cooldown. So I was like, uh, uh, maybe I should switch to the melee basic attack. Uh, the sorcerer has like a basic attack uh, melee where they just swing their wand for, for lightning damage, they swing the wrong. It's a melee attack. So now things are getting closer to me. So now when I do pop off my cooldowns, everything's getting stunned. And I also have an ability that when I take damage, there's a chance that my cooldowns get reset. Uh, on top of, I think when I use a cooldown, I think one of them, one of the like alterate the modifiers on the skill when i use one of those abilities my cooldown also has a chance to get reset so i'm just like spamming cool i have like three cooldowns set in my in my bar and i'm just spamming them because they just keep getting reset oh and also when i stun enemies my cooldowns like reduce in time i think by like 0.5 seconds whenever i cause a stun or whenever i do like critical damage or some shit so I'm just I'm just spamming all my cooldown abilities and every all the timing is just getting reset and reset. So it was like a real a real I think that was one of the things I had to settle on was figuring out my abilities first. Like what are my abilities and then I can like how you make them jive together. Yeah, yeah. And then I can start looking at the you know, the 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 gear and the aspects, which I still haven't done yet. So I think that's the next thing for me. Now, all my abilities are good. Now I got to look at the, the gear. So, which I'm in Nightmare now, so I'm starting to drop more better gear. Which yeah. I, I've been playing in World Tier 1 because I didn't see a point to Tier 2. It's just like more XP. So, it's more XP and better gear drop, isn't it? No, it's just you XP. It's just oh, XP. Wow. Well, that's, that's enough for me to like bump up a tier. Yeah. Uh, so... I, I've been playing strictly tier two, and like I said, it's been pretty easy. The only time it got hard is when I tried doing that, like, no minion build for him. And again, to be fair, a lot of the no minion, there, there's some no minion bonuses in the beginning, but you don't get those bonuses to be really effective till, like, much later in the skill tree. Yeah. Um, because uh, an exclusive thing to the Necromancer is their Book of the Dead. So you can have three types of minions available at the same time. So there's uh, skeleton warriors, which you can choose between three different types. Skeleton mages, you can choose between three different types. And golems, you can choose between three different types. And if you forego, each type has like two different modifiers you can choose from. So there's some variety there. And one of them, if you forego your skeleton warrior, 
you can get a bonus to your critical hit rate, your critical hit damage, or your damage resistance. Skeleton mages, I think it's like essence build up, shadow damage, and one other thing, golem, I can't remember. If you forgive, if you forego them, you can choose between one of three different perks. And they're pretty decent at the start. And when you get farther into the skill tree, you can find a node that increases those bonuses by like 20% and increases your damage by like 30% if you don't have like a minion on you. So <laughs> I fucked up. Pro I think I fucked up trying to do it earlier in the my playthrough. But now that I'm farther in, I might fuck around with it later. Um, my recommendation to people is like the game gives you an option to refund your st your spent points for free up until level eight. Play with that. Fuck around with that. But after level eight is when like you start getting like really starting to get your DPS out there. When the aspects start to appear for you, you can start accessing dungeons to get those aspects. So after level eight, like if you find an aspect that works for you, stick with it <laughs> and just do that till end game. Uh, if you find more aspects, only change around your build to like fit the aspects that you find and you'll get to end game pretty easily. The game will never be too hard. And then once you hit end game, you have more aspects at your disposal. That's when you can start fucking around with it, I think. Is yeah. That See, that's the thing. I don't like I don't fuck around with my gear because I feel like I, there was like one thing I had on for a really long time, but you just keep finding more and more better gear. So I just kept switching my gear out and not like upgrading anything, not sliding any gems until literally the very, very end of the campaign. We do the capstone. Uh, that was when I, cause I tried that shit solo and it just was not, it was not happening. But um, yeah, I didn't fuck with my gear at all until the, literally the very, very end Yeah, uh, where I like really had to, so. Yeah, I was uh, I was fucking around with it a lot, just like, especially with the aspects. I would find like aspects, and I'm like, okay, how does this work? How can I make it work with my gear? Like I said, I was swapping around between like the uh, the melee scythe generator and the decompose until I got that aspect that like increased the essence I produced with decompose. So I was like, oh, this is fucking cool. Like I'm gonna use this. And I found out, I was just looking up, like, what some necromancer aspects are out there, just to start, like, kind of pre-planning how I want to build my character. And like I said, there's one that, like, stretches out my, that chains my decompose to other enemies. And I'm like, okay, that'll build my DPS even more. And there's another thing with my decompose I forgot about. While I'm decomposing enemies, my minions do, like, an extra 10% damage to that enemy. So now, if I'm chaining it, I can have, like, a big crowd control effect to it, too. Like there, there's there's a lot of stuff to fuck around with in this game that's like really really cool. Yeah. And as someone who didn't play Diablo two till later, like my first Diablo game was three. So what I liked about three is the game is like focused on the dopamine, right? It's focused on like kill shit, get loot, kill shit, get loot. Like that's the whole thing. And sure, there's a story mode, but that's not what you're playing the game for. Like, once you beat the story mode, you unlock adventure mode, you start running rifts, you start, like, running seasons. That's when the game, like, really starts. And I don't give a fuck about the story. I, I've, I, I've put so many hours in Diablo, I couldn't tell you a fucking thing about the story. Um, I couldn't tell you a fucking thing about the bosses, uh, except for, like, how fucking annoying some of them were. And, like, that's it. Um, yeah. The story in this is really good. Yeah, the story in this is good. And as someone who didn't play Diablo 2 till later... Because I played Diablo 2 after 3 when they started, when they did that, uh, that remaster for it, right? And playing through it, I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. Like, it's focusing on the story, the world. It just doesn't have that same dopamine rush that, like, Diablo 3 has. So I think 4 has a good combination of the two of them with the aspect dungeons and the fact that aspects can be, like, slotted pretty easily without having to wait till end game to get a special Kanai, to get Kanai's cube to do it. Um, I feel like Diablo four is a good marriage of the two, like the open story driven aspect of four with like the dopamine kill shit, get loot aspect of three. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good marriage of the two. Granted, I'm, I've, I just got the game. Like when did I get the game? I got the game Tuesday night. That's when I started playing it. 
and I've only got a couple hours into it up to now. I'm on like level 32, I think. I hit level 32 yesterday. Okay. So I'm not even max level yet. Um, but yeah, I'm having a blast with it, dude. Um, I can't wait to play more of it, honestly. I'll probably, like, once this kid goes to bed, I'll probably, or once I put this kid to sleep, I'll probably play some more of it after the show. Um, yeah. Which he's falling asleep right now, so hopefully he'll just be quiet, <laughs> let me chill for the rest of the show, and then maybe after we can play some Diablo if you're up for it. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have a Game of First Clan yet? Have you made that yet? Uh, no. I didn't make one, because, uh, well, there's wasn't no one's playing this game. Hamtaro uh, is, but he was like the only one. Uh, well, now I'm playing it, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby's asleep. Cool. Yeah, I usually make one, even though I'm the only one in it. Like PSO two, PSO two had a Game Wars clan since like the beginning, <laughs> but no one plays that game. So. I'll be right back. The baby just fell asleep. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe real quick. All right. No, never mind. He woke up while I was talking. <laughs> oh, wait. He fell back asleep. Okay. I'm going to try it in. <laughs> Two seconds. Yeah. But, yeah, Diablo, man. I, I, um, that the new, the, the season is going to start like in a few days here. And I don't, I'm not the kind of motherfucker that makes multiple characters for shit. You know, I just don't do it. So I don't think I'm going to hopefully there's stuff that I can do with my current character when the season starts. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I mean, I'm still I'm still going to play the game and just enjoy it, you know. So even if it's not anything I can do season wise, I wish I'm sure there should be. I'm sure there's going to be something, but um I don't know how this is going to operate in this game. Uh, Diablo 3, like most of the season stuff came from like starting a new a season character running that season yeah which i i think that's how it's gonna work but i i think there will be some stuff that you don't have to make a new character for Um, maybe i'll I'll probably end up doing it still like um i'm just playing for the game right now enjoying it i'm gonna get so much as much time into it as i can before i start a season um if i do start a season i'll probably end up running like a druid i think the druid's pretty cool so yeah I might try running that. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, anybody who's anybody, go play this game. You're playing on PC or Xbox? I'm playing on PC, yeah. Okay. My cousin got it on Xbox, and he's not the kind of person to play these types of games, so I was surprised to see him play this. Like, he bought an Xbox recently because... Uh, <laughs> it was funny so he, he hits me up we we're walking through target i was getting some food for the baby and uh before target has this really good like baby food that's like super cheap um not as cheap as like going to costco and getting their home their their brand but it's still pretty cheap and i did some googling it's it's really good too it's good quality food so those of you struggling parents who are like getting by target and costco but i took him to target with me just so we could hang out while i was getting a uh, baby food and we were walking through the the video games and stuff. And he was randomly like, yo, bro, you know what I miss? I'm like, what? He's like, Halo, man. I miss Halo. Like, yeah. I want to play through it again. And I'm like, oh, yeah? And he's like, yeah, man. I heard, like, the Halo games are on Xbox now. I'm like, yeah, all of them. And he's like, oh, do I have to buy, like, a collection or something? I was like, no, man. I told him about Game Pass and an Xbox. And he was like, oh, shit, I didn't know that was a thing. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, dude, it's fucking dope. So he went and bought an Xbox, like, last week. Um... And he got this special edition that had Diablo with it, so he was downloading it. And again, he bought this Xbox to play like Halo, Gears of War, all those old Xbox exclusives. And he downloaded Diablo 4, and he was like, dude, this game's fun as fuck. I'm like, awesome, I'm glad you're into it. Yeah. Um, Because my brother bought Diablo 4, and he fucking could not get into it. He like, he didn't like it, he trade, he... He wanted to trade it in, but I told him, like, dude, you bought it new, you can't like trade it back in, like, you gotta... Or you can't just return it. You got to trade it in or, like, sell it. So he ended up just selling it on a Facebook marketplace. And he uh, he did not like it at all. Like, he tried to get into it. He gave multiple shots. He did not like it. But my cousin, though, he's, like, super into it. So Weird. I'll try to see if I can get him to, like, give it a shot. Yeah. 
And it's funny because like my brother's like super into like Borderlands. So I'm like, this is basically just Borderlands, like, but like I said. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's Borderlands, but it's not trying to be funny. Oh. Um <laughs> and builds are actually like fun to fuck around with. Um But yeah, so I was surprised he didn't like Diablo. Um, I'm convinced he didn't give it a shot. Honestly, I think he played one character, didn't like, and decided he hates the whole game instead of like trying out other characters. Or maybe he just uh, wants Borderlands shit. <laughs> maybe he wants maybe. that bullshit. Maybe he likes that. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with Diablo 4. My cousin's playing it. I think I'll hit him up and see if he wants to play sometime. Um, I don't know how to do the whole crossplay thing. I synced my Xbox account with my Blizzard account, so maybe that's the first step of it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's um, automatic. Actually, there's a lot of PlayStation guys playing this. It makes like, sense. It's like all I see. Like the most popular console. So yeah, I, I see it more than even the Blizzard guys though. It'll, it'll yeah. show you what platform they're on. Like if you just open the menu, it shows you who's nearby, and it's like all PlayStation. I barely have people like playing with me whenever I run through the game, but if you go to the city, the city is just filled with people. Oh yeah, yeah. Just outside of the city, though, it's like yeah. hardly anyone. Um, but I'm having fun with it. Um, I like the random events that occur in the game, so those are cool. Um, because they let you like they really they let you really test out your build because you're like I think my build's viable, but now that I have this like challenge that pops up, it's like oh, kill all these enemies and keep the people alive or clear through five waves of enemies in like two minutes or something but i can actually like test out my build see if there's uh if it is like up to par and i get a nice little bonus if i complete those those events so that's cool too um it's a lot of fun the game does a lot of work to like keep itself from getting too boring too quickly and that's what i love about it hopefully it's like it stays like that Oh, baby's fucking awake again. Damn it. <laughs> I hear him just like cooing and calling from the bedroom. I'm going to go grab him. But yeah, uh, let's start with the next story. I could talk about Diablo 4 all day, but. Yeah. Well, hopefully Diablo 4 comes to Game Pass pretty soon because. Yeah, hopefully. The uh, Microsoft Activision deal is a go. The battle is over. They've won. Um, even though the, the FTC tried to fight to their dying breath on this, even after they lost the uh, the case, they tried to. Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what all the fucking. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. I, I I don't even fully understand all this. But a um, buddy of mine was like super salty about it. Why? Because he was like, well, he's a Sony guy, first off, so uh-huh. <laughs> I just nothing to do with it. But also, he was telling me, like, you know, Xbox is trying to, like, kneecap Sony by, like, buying all the developers. And now they have all these exclusives, and they're going to try to choke hold Sony out of business by, like, denying them Call of Duty. Which they already said they're not going to do, first off. And second, if they did do that what's the problem like sony has some really good exclusives and like, also it's not like sony is not buying fucking exclusivity like yeah you know, they just i can't bought, like house mark or house marquee like even like final fantasy year. i can't play final fantasy on my fucking pc yeah exactly and that, that's what i'm saying like they've they've always been doing exclusives it's just you know microsoft is just getting better at it because they're buying out all the studios now yeah. He was like, yeah, they should be able to do that. And I was like, okay, dude, this is like a problem. Like, this is, there's a bigger problem here. Because he's like, like look at uh, the big publishers, right? It's like Square Enix, um, Square Enix, EA, and Blizzard Activision, probably the biggest publishers, right? And if you look at it's been a, a problem that's been building up, you know, when Blizzard, when Activision bought out Blizzard, you know, who approved that? When EA bought visceral games dice respawn all these developers who approve that um and then um let's say square enix you know buying idos montreal and getting like access to the tomb raider games like a sea of kane games um the hitman games you know all these games they didn't have any business with earlier they got access yeah. to them now because they bought all of them and like then- this is because this has been building out to be a problem it's just a problem now because microsoft 
a console manufacturer is buying out Blizzard Activision. If EA had bought Blizzard Activision, nobody, well, the gamers would have cared, but the FTC wouldn't have gotten involved. Yeah. And uh, now, because it's Microsoft doing it, now it's a problem. Like, and the only, the, the, the problem with the FTC's angle on this is that they're fighting it from the perspective of, well, this is bad for Sony. And that is a, it's a terrible angle to have on this. Yeah. Because who's who the fuck, fuck about Sony? For Sony? I care about the, the, the gamers, you know, the, the, the public. Yeah. And you can and... argue that like, oh, it's indicative that they're going to make it a game pass thing. So, so what's the problem? I'd rather pay $15 a year to play Call of Duty than like drop $70 every year for Call of Duty or 15 yeah. bucks a month to, call, to yeah. play all kinds of games, get access to Call of Duty. And especially um, since it'll be more, it'll be more widely available than it is right now, yeah. especially like, cause they're going to put it on the cloud and you know, you'd be able to stream it on whatever the fuck you want. They said they committed to putting it on switch, which Activision hasn't touched switch at all since like the Wii U when they put, I think they put, there was a call of duty, like ghosts on yeah, there or something. Ghost, ghost was on there. Yeah. Uh, and like they haven't touched the Nintendo since then, so yeah. like it's it's huge. Like everyone wins in this, well, at least for for now, I guess. Yeah. Like in terms of Call of Duty, I guess everyone's gonna win. But um, it's I uh, it's this isn't something that you're not gonna see the the fruits of until like many years down the line. I don't think you're yeah. really. Uh, this is this is gonna be like this is like the first chess move on on like a board that you just you you're not gonna be able to see the end game of this yet until way later. So it's gonna be interesting because again the 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 deal they have with Sony right now is a ten year deal. So yeah, so we'll see what happens in those ten years. Like, so yeah. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as everyone like everyone who's against it thinks it's going to be um a lot of people are upset that's like oh it's gonna cause the price of game pass to go up and i'm just like so like you're getting more stuff out of it why wouldn't it go up like yeah i wouldn't mind that like if it went up to like 20 bucks a month it'd still be worth it for all the shit i'm getting like like i don't mind like i just dropped 70 dollars for fucking diablo 4 I would have loved that was on Game Pass. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. That would have been great. That would have been great. Yeah, that would be great. Exactly. Even so like, like Starfield. Starfield. Yeah. You know, that's a seventy dollars game. That's launching on Game Pass. Exactly. That's why I'm like, I feel like a lot of people are just. Um, I understand the concern. There's like a monopoly going on, but the game, the game development landscape hasn't been the same for the past like twenty, thirty years. Like, you used to have all these smaller developers and publishers all over the place, but now with development getting more expensive, um, we just have a couple publishers that are publishing everything. Um, and all these developers that you love, like Bioware, for example, like, you know, they were independent for a long time until EA bought them out. And yeah. now, like, if I want a new Bioware game, it's got to go through EA before I can get it. That fucked up, like, Andromeda. Um, a lot of people loved... Uh, what was it? Respawn uh, for their work on Dead Space. And then, like, <laughs> EA fucked them up with Dead Space 3, and they fucking dissolved Respawn. No, it was Visceral, sorry. They dissolved Visceral, and now we got a new Dead Space remake under a different team that wasn't the original developers. So, monopolies have been a thing in this industry for a long time. It's been slowly building up to it that nobody noticed until, like, Blizzard Activision was bought out by Microsoft, so... Yeah, and uh, if, if like, Call of Duty is this huge fucking... Like, if it's the biggest deal on the planet, you... It would, it would It's going to force the competition to kind of come up with something better. I mean, Sony yeah. owns Bungie, the guys that made Halo. Yeah. So if they if they if they can't come up with something better than Call of Duty in 10 years then well first of all like Call of Duty Call of Duty still being the biggest game on the planet is 
insane to me. Like, yeah, it's still fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. I yeah, so saying that now, saying that again is like yeah, maybe maybe it will still be the biggest fucking game, but it it shouldn't be right. Or you can at least try to like, you know how they tried to make the Halo killer and they they finally did it with Call of Duty. But you know, I guess let's let's make the Call of Duty killer now. Let's see, let's yeah. that's that's where we're at now. That's what I'm saying, dude. And it's like Sony owns all these studios, and they have. I'll argue, like Sony and Nintendo have some of the best first party exclusives, like on the market. Like, yeah, but they make body. the same games over and over. Like they, I I don't know. There, 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 there's a trend with that type of game that Sony makes, right? That's true. Like I don't know if they can. I I don't I don't know what else they can come up with that's not just this fucking third person story action focus fucking. Because oh, I Spider Man, uh, Spider Man is that though. It's not really. I wouldn't compare it's, Spider-Man to like Last of Us or God it is of War. That. It is that. It is that. It's absolutely dude. not that. It is absolutely not that. I mean, they're, they're, the Spider-Man games are better. Arkham, anything. They're better video games. I would rather play them than watch them for sure. But like, that's like the one thing. Maybe it's still it's still that though. It's still like, hey, we really spent a lot of time on this story and these graphics and these characters. But uh, like, there's nothing. It's nothing memorable for me. There's nothing memorable about them. I'm not. I'm not. It's. It's. They. They make games for like a, more, a much more broader, wider audience of people. Yeah, and that's fine. They make games that a lot of people are gonna like. That everyone's gonna like. Yeah. Whereas, like the games I play are the games that a lot of people love. You know, I don't play games that everybody likes. I play games a lot of people love. Which sounds super conceited for me to say, but that's yeah. what I'm talking about. It's the thing the is, games the... that do a specific thing, and it's like, hey, we're gonna make a game that does this this thing very well, and a specific group of people are gonna like it. And I fall into the, that that group of people. Like, yeah, I think the the biggest problem is with the type of games that are that successful. The the problem is they take fucking seven eight years to make. Yeah, and it's just not. I don't think they can just keep doing that on the on the level that they're doing it, and have it be like sustainable for the long term. That's why when you get a game like you get a game like Vampire Fucking Survivors, that is fucking the one of the biggest. It's probably the biggest indie game on the planet right now, right? I would assume so. It's funny because it's not even that original. I've seen like I've seen Flash games that do a similar concept. Yeah. and it's funny that Vampire Survivor, like, it's such a fresh game, quote unquote, but indie games, like, Flash games have done that fucking 10 plus years ago. Like, you but can make Vampire a... Survivor, like, put it out there and, like, made it, like, a, an accessible product for the major gaming audience, not just, like, Flash nerds. Like, yeah. it became very successful. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, you can just make a good fucking video game. You don't have to yeah. make blockbuster, blockbuster. Cause that's the only thing you think people are interested in uh, exactly it's like that's that's the problem in my opinion and you know that some of these microsoft studios putting shit out like like grounded and and, and pentiment just in their free time and then being or really El fucking good elsewhere. El Paso El Paso elsewhere, elsewhere. One. That, yeah. that game is like graphically like not very impressive it's not gonna win any awards but you and I had a fucking blast with that game, dude. Yeah. Like, well, I was more talking about like big studios making small games, uh, like Hi-Fi Rush, like this this stuff oh, that yeah. just comes out from these huge studios. But they're smaller games, and they do very very well. Yeah. Like I feel like that's a better um, that's a better that's formula the, to, far, to, yeah. to 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 do instead of you know who the fuck knows is happening with the Last of Us shit and you know no one fucking like like this shit's just not like of course of course when it comes out it's probably gonna do well but you've been working on this for x amount of years now and you know you're not getting any Mm -hmm. income back during this whole thing and not just that but like when it comes to like those types of games like a lot of the games that i like get thrown to the wayside because uh this formula they're trying to follow 
Like, I, I, I've talked about, like, how God of War, I wasn't super into the new God of War. Um, and I like action games, like Devil May Cry, the older God of War games. So I played this new one, and I was like, oh, this game's not for me. And that's the formula that works. That's the one that got the sequel. That's the one that everyone's talking about. That's the one that got the uh, Amazon Prime series that just got greenlit. So I'm kind of like, oh, dude, if I wanted to, like, watch a show, I'll watch a show. Like, I'm sure the story's good, but, yeah. but yeah. like, that's not what I'm playing the game for. Like, Devil May Cry 5, I keep talking about Devil May Cry, but, like, it's a great example because it is a fun fucking game. Like, it's got a story there, but it's a fun fucking game first. And, like, I wish more games, like, focused on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this this stuff's more uh you know i i'm i'm curious to see where this 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 activision shit goes they're probably gonna i don't know they might officially announce this on monday i know there's stuff in the uk going on i think the what was it, the cma in the uk originally blocked blocked them blocked so um, I think they after this happened, they were like, "Oh, we'll we'll, we'll we can negotiate." So we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that. But um, yeah. So stuffs stuffs interesting stuff is going to be happening here pretty soon. I think your mic cut out, or if you turn it off. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, okay. My cat fucking yanked the cord <laughs> from my mic out, so I was like, "Oh shit!" And I got the baby in one hand, so he's like, he's asleep now. I'm gonna try to put him to bed in a little bit, but let's see if he stays asleep. So I had to do this fucking one-handed. <laughs> baby in one hand, cat in the other. Yeah, I'm living the dream. <laughs> yeah. No jokes aside, like, where was I? Yeah, like there's that type of game that just like isn't getting made anymore, and. It's we'll made happens, just by but... indies. Indies yeah, are true. making all the good games now. Yeah. Um, speaking of games, uh, Limited Run Games just had a conference, which I didn't know they did conferences. Not conferences, but... Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? They did this, like, uh, show. <laughs> yeah. Kind of spoofing E3. Spoofing E3 which... from, the, from the 90s. Yeah, the which is like, really E3. funny. Yeah, which is yeah. really funny seeing them do it. Like, but they just announced like a bunch of games that they got coming into their catalog. Uh, some games I never heard of. So some, uh, I some think, I, I think a lot of these are just physical versions of games that are already out. I think some, some of them, are, a lot of them are new. Uh, yeah, there's a couple that are new. I think, like, I think the Gex thing that they ended on was like, yeah, I think Gex that's is new. definitely new. That is definitely uh, Tom new. was new. Um, Gargoyles remastered. That got announced like a couple years, like two years ago, I think. And yeah. It's, yeah. Um. I didn't see the whole video, but yeah. Some of, some of the highlights here. There's a Shantae Advance. So after they did the the Game Boy Color Shantae game, they're gonna make a sequel on Game Boy Advance, but yeah, they couldn't find anyone to publish it, so they ended up just scrapping it scrapping it just but putting it's it still but still canon though that's the thing risky's revenge takes place like right after the story they wrote for the shantae advance yeah and um i saw like i don't know if it was in this like limited run games announcement but i saw a thing from way forward they put out for it where they're talking about like yeah this is a game that we never got it's canon to the shantae series like with risky's revenge a lot of characters knew each other and they had relationships formed that were formed in the advanced game that we never got to tell and now we got it coming out and they got a physical copy for game boy advance coming out yeah which i'm hoping it's not just a physical <laughs> gba game and i'm hoping you know they put this out yeah. digitally because <laughs> yeah, i would love I to know. play this i really like i really like these shantae games they're great so Dude, me too Dude, me too shantae is just a fucking blast yeah so I'm hoping if anything, if it's just if it's just physical, I would probably I might buy one of those um one of those analog pockets with the GBA with the GBA slots in them. I might just get one of those just for this. Cause that would be that's that's one hell of a novelty item. Like 
a physical GBA game in 2024, yeah. I guess, I'm is back. it coming out? All right, I'm back. I had to put the baby down. He finally fell asleep. Right. Um, let's hope he stays asleep. But yeah, that's something I thought was really cool. Um, and you're right, it is a cool little novelty item to have, like, fucking GBA game. Yeah. I gotta dig up my old GBA. See if I can find it. <laughs> oh, you have one. Yeah, I have one somewhere. Yeah. If anything, I'm sure like once people get this, they're gonna dump the cart and then just release the ROM and you yeah. play it on like an emulator or something. Yeah. So Or like I'm sure they'll release a digital version too. Like I that'd be silly just to leave it behind on this like physical cartridge. Like, yeah. Limited run games cartridge, like no. Yeah. But it's straight up a GB. It even has like link cable support. You can play it was yeah. like a battle mode. So oh, it's cool, man. It's cool. There's some stuff that they announced here that didn't go into too much detail for. It. Like, yeah, the Castlevania Advance Collection was the first thing they opened up with, and I bought that collection on Switch, and it's fucking awesome. But I wonder what they're doing for the physical version of it. They didn't say anything other than like, oh, we're doing it. But it's like, okay. Is it gonna have like artwork? Or are they gonna be like physical? Is it gonna be like a physical GBA cartridge like the Shantae game? I doubt it, but. I also doubt you would go through all this effort to like to fucking get us get someone to produce GBA cartridges and just do it for Shantae. Like there's gotta be other projects that are gonna utilize that resource, but Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do with this Castlevania Advanced collection, but we'll see. Um I might end up buying that if it's like a bunch of cool shit, like physical stuff, um <laughs> you know, artwork. I might end up buying that if it's enough cool physical shit in there. Um, I've never bought anything from Limited Run Games, but every time it, I go over there, is their site? There's a sold out. I mean, you know, Limited Run. So, but all the stuff I would get was just already was sold out. Like they had like an Outer yeah. Worlds, uh, Outer Wilds. They had an Outer Wilds uh, physical thing that was really fucking cool. I wanted it and uh, sold out. Yeah, exactly. Like. We'll see what they do with some of this stuff, but I don't know. Um, I think it's cool. I think there's some cool shit they got coming down, but it depends on what they put in it, to be honest. Um, um one of the things they had here, where what 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 was it called? Uh Azet. Azet. Where's I'm I'm looking through this guy's fucking wait, is this uh, so I couldn't tell if this was a real game or if or if they were just taking the piss but they came out and was like we know you guys love the cdi and some of the best zelda games no the best zelda games are on the cdi and we made a spiritual successor and it's coming and uh (laughs) from uh cdi uh 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 cd voice actors and artists really dude i they they showed this and i was like there's no there's no way there is no way this is real like you guys are joking with this but they're either i think they're actually doing it It, there's no steam page for it so we're like yeah you can pre-order it now there's no steam page or anything so but uh yeah they're doing it man and the style of um Wand of Gamelon. That's insane. Yeah, I I saw this and I was like, yeah, this is this. I'm going to wish list this as soon as possible. This This looks looks hilarious. Yeah. That's really fucking funny. Like, I don't even know how to respond to this. That's just fucking hilarious. Like. I would I imagine making a whole game out of a shit post, but well, I would imagine that if they're gonna do this, they're gonna do it. You know, they're not gonna make a bad a game. The, the problem with those games was, like, as shitty as the animations or the voice acting was, the controlling playing it was even worse. Yeah. So I would imagine they would. This would actually be playable, and not just fucking shit. Because if it's shit, then it's shit. Like it's not even like it doesn't even you know. But, you know, if it looks like shit, but plays really well, then that, that would be worth it, I that's think. That's a different dichotomy, yeah. Like, that's... Yeah. And plumbers don't wear ties. It's getting a definitive edition. Like, what <laughs> the fuck? 
this is something they started doing they they showed a lot of this there's a there's a karateka like the making yeah, of karateka that. thing and and this as well that has uh interviews with like the original people that were involved it has like interviews almost like rare replay i think it was like the first game that did that where it was like hey we're gonna put out all these old games and then also we're gonna like have interviews of people and go into like how this game was made and the development and the history of it and all that stuff and i think that stuff's really fucking cool like that stuff's really cool where you can kind of see some of the history of the game while and at the same time actually play the game too um i guess that's really cool so um, i love that like they have like for this plumbers don't wear ties thing they have like um gaming youtubers like talking about it like james roth yeah. is here um i can't remember what that girl's name is but she works a lot with the video game preservation society um that's really cool that's super cool yeah like, that's they, that's something i want to see more of like releasing old games but having i think atari did the same thing with like atari put out like a collection and they also have a bunch of interviews about like the history of the games and, and shit like that um I think that's really cool shit. Like, if you're gonna put out a, a remaster of something, it'd be nice to at least throw in some additional, like, put in some extra work with, you know, getting some of the guys who were originally involved yeah, that's with why, it. Like, it's more, that's why Rare Replay is so good because on top of like having a fucking awesome remaster, it's also like a cool like historic, like a it's like a digital museum of like yeah. all these rare, games, yeah, uh, with behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah, I'm into it. This is cool. There's some cool stuff here. Good on them for like making some cool shit here and putting out cool stuff that like I would have never thought of. I just want to see what some of the games that are already out, like what they're doing with that, because like like I said, they opened up with, like Castlevania Advance Collection. So I'm like, what's happening with that? Like what are they including there to make it worth picking up a physical release? Yeah. Um after this game, they're gonna show off uh, Midnight Fight Express, and I'm like, "What's I love Midnight Fight Express? Like, what's what's that got to do?" Like, yeah, yeah, they like, definitely just showed a lot of the stuff and didn't really get any info. Like I said, the Gargoyles remaster is another one that they're doing, but it's like, okay, I don't even know what the fucking Gargoyles remaster game looks like. like <laughs> Disney, Disney haven't, he hasn't even shown that game off yet. And you're telling me that, like, oh, we're doing a physical release. It's like, great. I don't even know what the fucking game looks like, bro. Like, yeah. Like, there's just some, like, stuff here that I'm like, what, what are we doing? But I get it. It's like a quantity thing. Like, oh, here's all the stuff we got in the pipeline. We can't go into more detail, but here's all the stuff we have. I think a lot of the trailers that they're showing off, too, are like, the trailer you can find on steam but whatever um i would love to know what physical stuff that they're including with these because that might get me to buy them um but we'll see when it gets starts getting closer to release yeah i wonder like, if they have any I, love that. I, I would buy a physical release of it if it had some cool shit they probably have info on their website it goes into more detail but maybe let me find it. Actually, I'm on their website now. Midnight Fight Express. They showed Midnight. a bunch of stuff that was um they they're developing a new engine, or I guess they already have an engine from I guess modern vintage gamer was helping them develop this engine to help port some of these old games. Uh the first one he showed off was Clock Tower which never got a English release. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. So they're porting that and doing an official translation. Oh, that's really cool. Now, my question is, are they going to, like, update anything about it? Well... It was a it was a Super Famicom game you controlled by like using the D pad as a like, mouse cursor and clicking on stuff, which is just not very intuitive in my opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, I I fig I I they probably not, are not going to change that, but maybe they'll have an option. I would hope. It's like no, you can just you can just control this 
normally. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see what they do with it. I mean, it's kind of coming. It's gonna be coming to PC too, I would assume. So you notice that you use your mouse to control yeah. it, but we'll. See. So they're doing that. They're doing a Jurassic Park Classic Games Collection. Yeah, that was a trip. Like, yeah. can't imagine the work that must have gone into licensing that. Like, because like it's Jurassic Park, so that's owned by fucking own Jurassic Park, like Paramount. Or, Paramount, I would think Paramount. I think, yeah, one of those big develop studios, and the games are developed by other development studios. So, yeah, yeah, you, know, you probably need to get like permission from them too, and the artists that worked on it, I'm sure, like have to be paid some residuals. Like, I've done a lot of hit homework on like copyright law and like why it's so hard to like Universal. get licensed games. Yeah, Universal. There you go. It's Universal Studios. <laughs> Um, why it's so hard to get fucking licensed games like back on the market, and like that's why because so many people were involved in it that own so many little things of it. Like, it's a lot of work, like just contacting the people and making sure they get paid for it. (laughs) It's like insane, yeah. Even though they showed that uh, TMNT, they're doing soundtracks for the TMNT old Ninja Turtles games, and the covers of all of them you see like the nintendo or not nintendo uh nickelodeon you see like the nickelodeon logo on it's like oh right because they own like, it now yeah 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 it's, it's such a bizarre thing seeing like here's the old tmnt artwork with like the nickelodeon logo like <laughs> yeah the nickelodeon didn't own it back in the day but they do own it now so yeah their name's gonna be on it <laughs> It's just a trip. And even then with the license of an it's like totally different because uh, Nickelodeon owns the rights to Ninja Turtles, but that's only for the uh, animation, live action, and uh, like like media like that. The comic books are still owned by the original creator. Like he didn't sell his uh, rights to the comics. He still owns the comics. Mm. So that gets even more complicated. So that's why like, the comics are going to do with the shows and movies because they're their own thing. But the creator is working on them. So you could argue, like, so which one's canon? Because <laughs> the original creator is still working on the comics. Are the comics canon? Like, it's it's weird. Like, the Ninja Turtles are a weird licensing thing. Um, and that's only one of the creators. Like, only one of the two creators owns the comics. The other one, like, sold out his uh, share. So if you want to know about it, there's a... Uh, the toys that made us on Netflix has a thing about the Ninja Turtles and it goes into like the history of like the comics, the movies, the toys, the games, like, and the rights for it. And it actually reunites the creators for the first time in like 20 years because wow. they sold the rights off. So it's really cool. It's really cool to like watch. So go check it out. Um, it's super interesting. Um, especially if you like Ninja Turtles, like I do, I fucking love the Ninja Turtles. So, um, where was I? Yeah, Limited Run Games is some cool stuff coming out that I, I kind of want to check out and see what they have down the pipeline. This one game that they showed off, one more I want to talk about, was Another Crusade, I think is what it was called. It's like... You said it was inspired by Super Mario RPG? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's basically... It's basically Mario RPG, but you know, with, with their their take on that kind of yeah. style. So Which looks cool. Yeah. And what's what's cool is that Limited Run Games, I've never heard of this game before. Like, was this game announced, like, at Limited Run? Because... Don't know. Uh, it was the first time I heard of it, so... Yeah. I'm looking it up, and, like... There was a trailer for it, like, a year ago. But the newest trailer was is like two days old the same time limited run had like after limited run had their like announcement Mm. so i think they're publishing it at least i don't know um oh so the game they showed after this yeah there's a lot of stuff they showed and i was like is this out is this a thing There, there was one rose and camellia collection which is uh like an anime ass anime bullshit punch out is that what he said punch out 
but you're not like it's like you're not boxing you're slapping uh <laughs> is it like is it like a sexy game like, no 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 it's not sexy at all it's like a romance it's like one of those like romance animes but you're like oh, slapping this game. you're like slapping bitches i heard of this game Is this a thing that's already out? And they're like, here's a physical oh, no. collection because it's called a collection. I don't know. I don't know, but I heard of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought that it's looked it. interesting. I like, is that only on Switch? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. This is weird as fuck. <laughs> um, my mouth is giving me so much shit. I fucking hate this thing. I, I love this mouse, but like, I'm gonna be feel, feel so much better once I swap it out. Yeah, yeah. That was that was most of everything that they showed. Um, they had a little thing, like a little teaser, I guess, for Colossal Cave, which is the next game from Ken and Roberta Williams, and they didn't show much. It definitely looks unfinished, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, we'll see what they do. They have some stuff announced, but yeah, if you guys want to check it out, there's like a whole. How long is the video? Like an hour. Yeah, oh, like thirty minutes. Yeah, most of it's just um, like joking around around the E three stuff. So. Oh my god, my mouse is pissing me off. Dude, I click on shit and it doesn't come out and I get fucking mad. Um, fucking click, god damn it. I can hear it <laughs> click and it doesn't do anything and it pisses me off. Um, no quickie news because nothing really happened quickie wise. We got yeah. a new trailer for Ratatan. A yes. Patapon spiritual successor. I never played Patapon, so. You've never played Patapon? I've never played Patapon. Wow. I know the, the memes like from cultural osmosis you know yeah playstation all-stars had a pat upon level like pat the pat the pat the bun like, i know yeah, that yeah. Like, i've never played it oh great games great yeah. games those are stuck on psp right like there's no way to they're not anything only else. on only on psp you know if if sony if there's a problem with fucking sony man they don't like i i thought weren't they putting some shit on the playstation collect Wherever the fuck their shit is called, am I am I am I tripping or weren't they putting some PSP shit on there? Maybe I think I'm, so. Maybe I'm wrong. Crap! See if I blow the dust out of my mic or my mouse, it'll fix it. <laughs> Doesn't feel more responsive, but whatever. Yeah, but yeah, as far as I know, Patapons never hit anything else so yeah you ba basically can't play those games anymore officially um which is a bummer but uh spiritual successor they, they're launching this on kickstarter so i'm definitely even if this is uh exclusive to whatever fucking shit that i don't have i'm i'm like if this is like a switch exclusive or something i don't care i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm gonna back this, man, because I, I want to see this happen. Yeah, it looks dope. I want to see this happen too, especially since I never played Patapon. Like, this will be a good way for me to like try it, you know, get into it. But we'll see what happens. Let's see what else we got here. We also have releases ember nights is dropping on switch july 18th i've heard of this game where have i seen this game before uh have have we seen this before i think i've seen it yeah it looks familiar i've been thinking of something else though it I'm looks about it. pretty cool yeah it does Co-op. It's early access. Did we play this on a demo derby one day? I don't think so. I don't think I ever played this. I'm checking it out. I'm adding to my wish list. Well, yeah. it's coming out July 18th, so 
at least a definitive edition is coming out for PC, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. As we don't know, Lisa is a trilogy of games, but a duology of RPGs. Uh, I'll explain that later if you want to hear about it. But, <laughs> um, so basically, Lisa had a RPG maker like Walking Sim. You know, those are super popular. Those horror like Walking Sim RPG maker games way back in the day, like Yumi Niki, stuff like that. And this game is a sequel to that, but it's a totally different game. And it's a, a, a turn-based role-playing game with some very hard choices. I actually played this game a bit. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It does a lot of really cool shit. And it got a... It got a sequel called Lisa the Joyful after that. That's like a direct sequel to this one. And... This definitive edition combines both those games together into one game, into one collection, and adds some extra content and stuff, and that wasn't in the original game. So that that might be the best way to play it. I've heard good things about it. I played it quite a bit. It's pretty cool. Um, I see you own the game. So have you played it at all? <laughs> Very little. I loaded it up and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I I need to try it again. I I don't know if I could get into it with uh It's not an easy game to get into. It's Yeah. I like the idea of it, but I feel like the execution is something I could not get into. Um But yeah, I'll probably check it out again with the definitive edition. Um Thursday, July 20th, we got some other games coming out for PC, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, and S. You have Cross Tales. It's a tactical RPG. I thought it was some furry shit based on the name, but it's not. Yeah, yeah it kind um, of is. They, they have cat ears. They're like cat girls. They have cat ears. They're not like furries, though. Yeah. Um. Then we got... Oh, this is like, like a uh, this is like a Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Fucking mouse pissing me off, bro. <laughs> I am like so annoyed by this. I might have to swap my mouse out so I can get this one replaced. Um, yeah, it looks like Final Fantasy Tactics, not like Fire Emblem. No, no. shame, that's what you're into. But so many like strategy RPGs, like trying to copy Fire Emblem, which is fine. Like it's not they're they're not bad games, but it's like there's more to that formula than just Fire Emblem, you know? Yeah. And like if every turn-based game was trying to be like Final Fantasy, it's like I get it, you know. But there's there's more options than just copying that. Um, this actually looks pretty dope when I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'm not into tactic shit. Me neither, but this looks like fun. Um, I tried playing Disgaea, and like that was cool, but like I couldn't. It didn't hold my attention for very long, which is a bummer because. This guy definitely like appeals to me and like a lot of other things, but it's the tactic stuff that I can't get past. I'm having a hard time. Yeah, this guy was like the only one that I could get into, even a little bit. Yeah, and it yeah. didn't hold my attention that long. Um, yeah, this looks cool. And we got Might and Magic Clash of Heroes Definitive Edition. This is like another tactics game, but it's really weird. It's I can't even tell what I can't even tell what it is. Yeah, the board looks like, I don't know, it's super weird looking, but it could be cool. Oh, it's like, uh, is it like a match three? What the fuck is happening? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. I can't quite figure out what's going on here. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. I'm fascinated by just looking at this and trying to like figure out. It's it, lo it like looks like a match three puzzle, but also there's like combat happening. Huh. Okay. I like I like when a game makes me look at it and go, "What is happening here?" Yeah, me too. Because it's just you know, it's like it gets creative with the gameplay in in different ways. Oh my god! You hear me like rapidly clicking on my mouse, like nothing's <laughs> happening. It's like gotten so much worse. It was like one in every hundred. Now it's like one in every ten, and it's not even like it's like a one in ten chance when I click, it's gonna do anything. 
Oh my god, this is obnoxious as fuck. Um, learn some keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I have another mouse, but like it's not this mouse, so I think I'll do it today. My wife gets home from like the appointment to get the oil changed. I'm gonna go to Best Buy and like cash in my uh fucking protection plan. <laughs> Boy, if you like tactical games, this is the week for you. Yeah, dude, the fucking Nobunaga's Ambition is coming out. Like, those of you who don't know, Nobunaga's Ambition was like the game Dynasty Warriors was like based on. Not really. So, Nobunaga's Ambition was like a strategy tactics RPG, and that got a game called Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Which is what Dynasty Wars is based off of. Yeah. So. And this is just not, I mean, <laughs> not, not going to do it for me, fam. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're like really old games that I couldn't, like, I'm not going to be able to get into. Um, yeah. I'm going to skip that. Uh, Punch Club <laughs> 2, fast forward. Punch Club, the uh, fighter management game. <laughs> yeah. I actually heard the first game was like really good, but I never played it. Yeah, it looks all right. I, you know, I like. Oh my god, you see, do you see the description for this game? You have come here to read game descriptions and play fighter management sims, and you're all out of descriptions. <laughs> god. I like that. It's funny. Wow. People think like that 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 joke is a reference to uh, Duke Nukem, but it's not. Uh, Duke Nukem actually stole it from uh, fucking They Live. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, what's the fucking guy's name? What's his fucking name? Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rowdy Roddy Piper. That's his name. He was uh, a wrestler. He was the main character in They Live, and uh, he came up with this line. He's like, I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. And uh, he actually wanted to use that in his wrestling career, but he never had the chance to do it, so he just used it in the movie. Oh. And then Duke Nukem like referenced it, and everyone thinks like it's a Duke Nukem thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured most of the shit in Duke Nukem is not original. It's not. It's like all references to other shit. Like yeah, some of yeah. your favorite Duke Nukem lines are like. Come get some is a reference to uh, fucking Evil Dead, and so is Hail to the King, baby. Yeah, like all those. Duke Nukem's just a huge fucking nerd. He just references <laughs> like, like uh, cult media, and everyone thinks he came up with it. He's that dude that like references like a like, like a movie like a, that nobody's ever seen, and everyone thinks it's like original. Yeah, he he's the dude that makes like the movies and media he consumes his personality. He's actually kind of a dweeb. <laughs> There, I said it, dude. Nukem's a fucking dweeb. Um, there's actually this really funny, like, webcomic that jokes about that. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Um, <laughs> where the fuck was I? Yeah. <laughs> Punch, Punch Club 2. Uh, that game's a thing. Uh, was Spike Survivor Sword of the Necromancer? Is this a sequel to the other Sword of the Necromancer game? Or is it a totally different thing? What the fuck is Sword of the Necromancer? Yeah, it was like a game that came out. It's like a dungeon crawler that came out a couple of years ago. Hold on. And yeah, this has nothing to do with that, but. What the fuck is that? Well, there was a sword in Necromancer. Yeah, it's like a dungeon crawling, like. RPG. Yeah, this is not that. This is this, not that at all. It's a vampire survivor. This is on my wish list. Oh shit. Is this a fucking is this a Zelda? West Spike? No. No, I was just, talking about this, you know, oh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, my bad. I I'm I I I got <laughs> Oh yeah, sort of the necromancer is like a Zelda like. But it looks good. This looks good. I said dungeon crawling RPG, but now that you said Zelda like, yeah, it's more of a Zelda like than anything else. Is it multiplayer? There's two characters on the screen. Uh, it supports local multiplayer. Okay. It's also a roguelite, so. Okay. Yeah. Well then. I actually heard this game is pretty good. 
I never played it, but I heard good things. All right, well, that's on the wish list. So, Wisp Spike Survivors is a survival yeah, and farming game. Wait, farming too? The horse survival farming game is what it says. That's that's a cool combination of things. All right, that's a neat twist to like the yeah a horse survivor like vampire survivor formula. Yeah, because everything else is doing is straight up vampire survivors, down to even the attacks. That's why I like uh, Twenty Minutes Till Dawn because it has such a cool like twist from it. Yeah. I still fucking play that game. Just waiting for some more expansions to come out so I can play some more. Okay, this looks pretty cool. That's a cool little thing. I'm not a big fan of like farming games, but like that's a cool way to like mix with the gameplay a bit. Yeah, use the seeds that drop when dying to grow them in your Wispike farm and make even stronger hybrids. See, that's turn, cool. Turn your foals into manure to accelerate the growth. That's cool. That's a, that's actually pretty neat. I like the way that's that's going. Yeah, interesting. Although if it just works like XP, <laughs> it's oh, just yeah. upgrading shit. Now that I think about it, saying out loud, that's that's just how XP works, and how like bumping up your stats after a run works. But it says you know, plant them. Fine. You plant them, and they grow, and the, only the adult ones can fight. So you have to wait and take care of your farm until they grow. So. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I'm, 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 I think it's cool again. Um, yeah. I might check this out. I might check this out. This is pretty neat. I want to reward this type of like creativity here. Yeah. Um, Pikmin Four is coming out July twenty first. I forgot this game was happening. I'm being honest with yeah, you. Yeah. So soon. Yeah. That's what's cool about like Nintendo. They've been doing recently. That's like, hey, we're not going to announce a game till it's like coming out later this year. Yeah, and but they've always that. they've that that's what they've been always doing though. Even with even with the Switch physical launch, they're like, yeah, it's coming out in like three months. So no one even yeah. knew what the fuck it was called until <laughs> they're like, yeah, the NX. We're gonna find out what the NX is, and it's coming yeah. out in three months. Um, not a huge Pikmin fan, but um, they're good games. Yeah, I kind of want to pick up the oh, excuse me, the remasters on Switch because I never played Pikmin. Yeah. So, well, that's not true. I played it when I was a kid. I played the first Pikmin game, but the the game being on a timer like gave me anxiety. So I'm like, I don't want to play this. <laughs> yeah, that and it's just a scary game in general, man. It's like yeah. terrifying. So, yeah, I'll check it out then. The first one, how much is the first one? Like twenty bucks. On the switchy shop. Hold on. Twenty twenty bucks would be a good price. So they sell it. Oh wow, it's not twenty bucks. Pikmin oh. one is Pikmin one and two are each thirty dollars separately. But if you buy them together, it's only fifty. Ooh. Which is like twenty five dollars a game isn't bad. I feel like these should be twenty dollars though. Especially since, hold on, check it. And the... Is they released like Pikmin for the Wii like forever ago? And yeah, those are like 50 bucks. So this is the cheapest way to get Pikmin, I guess. <laughs> Hey, yeah, that's Nintendo for you. Yeah. We make it sound like $30 is so much more, but like, we were already expecting like $20. And if you buy them together, they're like 25 each. So it's not that bad. Yeah, but it's Pikmin though. It's Pikmin, <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with Pikmin, man. Pikmin's fun, but it is definitely like a kind of game where you're like, I don't know if I want to play this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's uh, it's difficult. It's harder than you think. It, it's harder than yeah. it looks. Uh, well, 
Even that first I'll keep one. Keep it in mind, man. Keep it in mind, man. This fucking mouse is pissing me off. My God. I'm like, not. Nah. Every time it like doesn't work, I get like a little more pissed off. Um, it's a good thing that's the end of the show, though. <laughs> Humphreys, that was it, everybody. Humphreys Biden. The mmm. I'm I'm inclined to agree. Mm. And mm, for uh, what? I don't know. Zoom to you. Zoom to that ass. <laughs> That's gonna do it for the show, everybody. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. You guys have been great. You know, go home, be safe, be excellent to each other. And we'll stop you, man. Tell people they can find us. Go to gameoverse.com. Go to gameoverse.com slash twitch. Gameoverse.com slash YouTube. Gameoverse.com slash uh Discord. And hop in there and talk to us and chat with us and hang out with us and play video games with us play diablo with us join the clan not that one the game of clan <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah have some fun be good to each other take care of each other be good people pirate video yellow. games oh. yeah Pirate Nintendo games, especially. Yeah. Um, that's it. That'll do remember, it. Remember, don't talk to police unless you have your lawyer present. Ex- absolutely. <laughs> There's this comic. I'll tell you about it later. Everyone, <laughs> be good. peace out. Bye bye.